Hello guys and gals and welcome uh, to another episode of uh, Mercenaries. This is going to be the guide for the Act 2 Mercenaries. I'm going to be going over a lot of different ways that you could potentially set up your Act 2 Merc. Uh, most of this is going to revolve around in-game setups, but of course you can scale this stuff down for you know lower equipment. It's really just a matter of getting your mercenary the equipment that you're looking for. Now, um, as I go over with all of these, I'm going to talk about this real quick, which is the types of mercenaries that you can potentially set up. It's very important to remember when you're setting up a mercenary that it's a very personal thing. You're setting up the mercenary to help your specific character. Like, what you do and how you set up your mercenary is going to be directly dependent on what kind of character you are. Um, you're not always going to set up your mercenary the same way. And um, we're going to talk about a lot of different ways that you can set up the active mercenary and, and go over those. First off, um, there's For the Merc builds. Uh, for the Merc builds is basically where you set up the mercenary to have the best damage output that the mercenary can have, not necessarily that you can have. Um, and what do I mean by this? Well, it's really just a matter of a distinction of terms. Um, if you're setting up a mercenary for utility, you're probably not going to get the most out of the mercenary um, in his damage output or his tank ability, etc. But with this particular way that you're setting up the mercenary, you're going to set up the mercenary for himself. He's going to have the best tanking equipment, the best damage output, and you know he's not necessarily going to be the most supportive mercenary, but he will, however, be a very effective mercenary nonetheless. Uh, number two is the tank build. Uh, tank builds are basically set up with large amounts of damage reduction, large amounts of resistances, um, cannot be frozen, uh, including things like Guardian Angel Templar Coat, which will, of course, make them, you know, obviously have more maximum resistances, which is very good for, like, a Trav build, and, uh, and so forth and so on. Number three is utility. Um, utility is where you set up a mercenary specifically to assist you and not necessarily for the mercenary's benefit. Um, they may be using things like an insight pole arm or a pride pole arm or any number of things to give a benefit to you that is not necessarily going to help them. Uh, magic find. This is another way that you could potentially set up a mercenary, and it has to do specifically with just getting large amounts of magic find. Um, obviously, the mercenary still has to be workable and has to actually be able to fight, but you generally want this to be a interesting setup for like a high magic find build. Uh, there's some specific pieces of equipment that you would use for that. Now, first off, I feel like we need to go over the Act Two mercenary and talk about his various auras and things. First off, there's the Blessed Aim Aura, which is strictly attack rating based, and if you do not need attack rating, you're probably not going to use this one. Um, it's really going to help out anything that needs attack rating, though. Minions need attack rating, players need attack rating, other mercenaries need attack rating, because most of them are melee or ranged in some way. Only the Act 3 mercenary is exempt from that rule. And basically, it's just a really nice aura to give a higher two hit rate to everything and everyone nearby. Um, obviously they don't sack, so if you have two mercenaries running the same aura, it's not really going to help. He also gets a nice little attack rating bonus passive to himself as well, which means he hits, uh, well, better as well. Um, second is Might. Might Aura is a really popular one because it gives a large amount of physical damage, and it only gives physical damage. So if you're dealing physical damage in a ranged or melee situation, not Spellcaster, sorry, um, melee or physical druids, but uh, you don't count. Uh, basically, any physical damage that's being dealt will be increased with Might, um, including minions, which is really nice. Um, but just keep in mind that it does not increase any kind of, uh, well, magical damage or... Uh, spellcaster damage. Uh, on top of this, it's also kind of important to note that uh, while increasing damage is nice, if you're missing, then it doesn't necessarily work. So it's important to remember the difference between just simply bumping up your damage output and actually getting yourself to the point where you can actually hit the target. Uh, if you have like a 100% hit rate, but you're only doing 50 damage, you're going to do a lot more damage than a person who has a 50% hit rate and, you know, like double the damage it's just that's just how the equation works because you're going to whiff a lot and that's just the way that the, the cookie crumbles uh, there's a lot of whiffing there's also blocking and all sorts of other things so it's better to be more accurate than have more damage defiance is strictly defense and defense is actually pretty nice if you need it and can be extremely effective to help keep you alive don't let people who tell you that defense is the worst stat um, really get into your brain because to be honest with you uh, they're lying 
uh, defense is very important. As long as you have enough of it, you're usually good, and you don't really have to stack it to the moon and back. But if you don't have enough defense, you're going to notice, and you're going to notice very fast. Um, generally, for most characters, when it comes to defense, you really need um, a decent amount of defense, like... 3,000 or higher in Hell Difficulty. Um, if you don't have 3,000 or higher in Hell Difficulty, like, everything is going to hit you all the time. You're basically a raw sponge at that point, and it, you're pretty much not going to be able to get, you know, like, take melee damage at all. Um, it's basically the frequency of hits is what this decreases. So it decreases the overall frequency of hits. It does not decrease the damage that you take, however. Um, it's very effective for keeping mercenaries alive. It's also very effective for keeping players alive. However, the interesting thing about this aura is that usually the people who need this can't really get their defense high enough to actually be useful, and the people who can get their defense high enough to be useful don't really need this. So it has limited usefulness um, to a very specific number of classes. Um, the Prayer Merc, which is a very interesting one, gives a large amount of regeneration. However, the Prayer Merc's regeneration doesn't work on the actual Prayer Merc, which is weird. But it does work on everyone else, which is really cool. So um, it is important to note that um, you can set up some pretty crazy setups with the Prayer Merc, um, including a triple regen setup, which is one of the most common, uh, which is basically Insight Polearm. Um, combined with a cure helmet, um, and you get a really nice triple regen effect, which can can make your HP regenerate really, really, really freaking fast. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this triple regen setup on him real quick. Um, and keep in mind that if you do the triple regen setup, you don't really have any life steal because cure doesn't have life steal and insight doesn't have life steal. So you're gonna have to use bone flesh or. Um, uh, Chains of Honor, which are the only two life leech armors. And honestly, I would probably just highly recommend Bone Flesh because you're already set up with a large amount of crushing blow, or sorry, uh, Deadly Strike. Um, and uh, this will give him the open wounds as well, so you can get open wounds into your equation, and that way your mercenary is applying open wounds. But basically, with this setup, you do have some pretty crazy regeneration powers, uh, which are going to affect you specifically. Um, however, the Cure Helmet is a relatively small range, so do keep that in mind. So it's only going to apply in melee range, and it's going to be not really as amazing. Uh, another problem with this setup is that your mercenary attacks really slowly because, well, I mean, he has no increased attack speed whatsoever, right? So without any kind of increased attack speed, you're running into issues with the ability to attack quickly. I would recommend that you make your insight in a faster base, like a Thresher or a, um, well, yeah, Thresher or a, the, the what is it, the Greater Thresher. And um, those are the two faster bases for Insight and definitely going to be better for this particular build because there's really not a lot of IAS on it. Even with a 15% IAS jewel in the armor, um, you're still going to be pretty slack on attack speed. Uh, Cryptic Axe is probably not the best choice for this, even though that's the Insight that I currently have, because it's just too slow. Uh, definitely a Thresher if you can get your hands on it. I think that's probably one of the best ones. Um, but that's the triple regen setup, and it does work really well to apply regeneration to everybody. Another interesting quirk of the regeneration setup is that as long as the prayer level is the same across all mercenaries, you can actually share and stack multiple regenerations across all of the players who are affected by the prayer aura. Same thing with the insight. If all the insights are level 17 or whatever the level that they are, even if they're all a 16 or all 15, they can also stack and you can get multiple regenerations. Um, and same thing with the cure. As long as it's the same level, you can get multiple regeneration, regenerations, which means that you can potentially have some crazy level regenerations. Um, as you can see here, my current regeneration is 21, which is multiplied by 3. Um, and uh, assuming that all of the mercenaries were the same level, with the same level prayer, same level incense, insight, and same level cure, um, you could potentially have a 21 times 3, which is going to get you a 63 regeneration per tick. Um, and then you could also have eight players in the group, which means that you could potentially have 504 regeneration per tick, uh, which is, I believe, once every two seconds or something, uh, which divided by one, two gives you a regeneration of 252 health per second, which is pretty massive. 
and um, it's definitely going to make your HP go up really, really fast. Uh, I'm not particularly fond of this particular setup, though, because I do feel like it does make the mercenary particularly weak, since the regeneration from the mercenary doesn't work on the mercenary. Um, also, you end up missing out on some of the more crucial auras, like Might, or Blessed Aim, or whatever it is that you need for your specific character, so do keep that in mind. Um, moving on, we also have Thorns, which is really effective for minion-based builds like Necromancer or Druids. And if you happen to be a character that gets hit all the time that happens to be in melee combat, like a Druid, which is very common. Druids are actually kind of raw sponge characters with large amounts of HP. Thorns could come in handy there, too. Um, one that's missing from this list is Holy Freeze. Uh, Holy Freeze is a very effective defensive aura. Uh, which can definitely make your time a lot easier. Not only does it slow down monsters, it also applies a chilling effect, and just in general is an absolute powerhouse of a defensive aura. Um, even more defensive than Defiance, which literally has its namesake tied up in the defense aura, um, which is actually kind of silly. Uh, another way that you can set up your mercenary, and this is one that I like to do, um, I like to do the setup that basically involves... Uh, maximum DPS output on the mercenary. And uh, maximum DPS output would probably be a Might Merc. So let's go ahead and grab a Might Merc. Um, and you might be asking, well, how do you get maximum DPS output on a mercenary? And uh, it basically involves giving him the best weapon for his specific build. Um, there's two really good options for, or actually three really good options for a max DPS build. Uh, for a mercenary, and it basically involves things like obedience. Um, obedience in a man catcher is a very cheap and very effective option for maximum DPS on a mercenary. Not only does it have level 21 enchant, which gives him a huge amount of attack rating, 40% faster at recovery, which he needs desperately, um, as well as negative targets defense and 40% crushing blow, but it also has all resistances. It's literally one of the best weapons that you can throw on a mercenary, pretty much bar none. Um, and if you combine this together with the right equipment, like for instance a G-Face, um, to give him the additional crushing blow and deadly strike, which gives you a massive, what is that, uh, 35 plus 40, which is 40, 50, 60, 75, so you get 75% crushing blow here. Uh, the important thing to note, though, is that G-Face and Obedience do not have any life leech. So if you go with this setup, you have to go with one of the Life Leech armors, uh, which is either Chains of Honor, or again, we have Bone Flesh. Now, if you look at these, neither one of these has open wounds. We have no open wounds on Obedience, and we have no open wounds on G-Face. So if you go with Chains of Honor, you won't get any open wounds, but you will get your Life Leech, and your resistances, of course, will all be capped out. Um, and the 200% damage to demons and undead is definitely very nice. The damage reduction, the 50% damage reduction is amazing. And Chains of Honor is definitely the safer piece of armor that will keep him, uh, you know, like his damage uh, reduction in check. However, Bone Flesh, um, if uh, fueled with a nice 15% IAS jewel, ethereal, and double upgraded, is going to give him 25% open wounds as well which stacks up very nicely with the way that his character is set up. And when you set your character up like this, with this damage set up, um, he can pretty much just kill whatever. Like, he's not going to have issues killing pretty much anything. Now, a more expensive option than the one that I'm currently using um, would be something along the lines of an Infinity. Um, Infinity is almost just as good as... The uh, Obedience Man Capture, um, in uh, most ways, it is missing some things, but uh, it does also have pretty much everything that he needs as well. It's just a lot more expensive. Obedience is definitely the cheaper, cheaper option, um, and Infinity is the mid-grade option. And you might be asking, well, what do I mean by mid-grade option? We got like, this set to... Uh, Pretty sure this is set to players eight right now, so he might have a little bit of trouble in there tanking everything on his own. Let's drop this down to P1 real quick, just so we can get a better, a better idea of his damage output. Also, let me grab a couple potions for myself. Um, and you might be asking, what do I mean by that? That infinity is only a mid-grade option. Um, well, there is another option, and I'm going to save that for a second because we're going to show that to you in a minute. But this is an option that is very rare, and it's hard to come by. It's it's something that if you ever find it, you've pretty much found something worth a lot of money. Uh, a lot. But it does exist, and um, 
finding it is the problem. So here we go. We got some crushers. Let's uh, let's um, play around with some crushers real quick. Now, of course, if you have this mercenary, you're going to be supporting him with other things as well. So you're also, of course, going to get the support of like fanaticism, uh, concentration, whatever aura you happen to be running, or whatever other effects. Like if you're a sorceress, you can enchant him, and uh, and he can really pump out the damage because of the high amount of crushing blow that he has. Also, he can really pump out damage versus bosses. The open wounds keeps them from regenerating, and the 70% faster recovery is very important here too. Um, one of the things that you got to know about this particular mercenary, and and I feel like I always need to say this when it comes to the Act Two mercenary, is that the Act Two merc. Um, has the worst faster hit recovery breakpoints uh, basically in the game uh, uh, with the exception of the Act 3 Mercenary and I think the Act 3 is the only one that's worse which is which is actually kind of terrible but uh, let me pull this up on the screen here for just a second so if you go down to the faster hit recovery frames uh, it's got 18 million ads on this website uh, faster hit recovery frames. We got do 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 do. Here we go. Um, so you notice that the sorceress, who is the worst in the terms of the classes, has a 15 frame faster recovery, which is absolutely terrible. All right. And the reason why her faster recovery is so bad is because well, she's a so she's a caster. But the Act Two mercenary has the same horrible frames as the sorceress. So if you've ever played a sorceress and you've realized the importance of having faster recovery on your sorceress because if you don't you can end up getting faster recovery locked and killed um having faster recovery at least about 60 percent or 86 percent faster recovery is pretty darn important to make sure that you can hit at least a decent recovery rate so that you don't end up getting locked well 70 percent is pretty good you've already passed your eight frame break point break point and you're pretty close to 86 with a pretty solid setup so let me show you the um, absolutely ridiculous rarest seal feathers um, option. And this is something that you probably are never going to see. Uh, but uh, if you do see it, well, then you're, you're a pretty lucky guy. Um, and this has to do with the Fool's Cruels uh, option. This is I went ahead and crafted this. This is not real, but I went ahead and crafted it. It's a Fool's Cruels amp. Uh, of haste with life leech and two sockets uh, which is about as perfect of a roll as you could ever possibly get for this type of item um, and for something like this you would probably not go for more damage because it already has an ex obscene amount of damage um, you would probably go with burr runes um, to add in the 40 percent crushing blow and this will sit you at some absolutely insane damage output because the amplify damage of course combined with all of the other beautiful effects is going to make this thing smack like a Mack truck. Um, the other interesting thing here is that because, of course, you have a item that has life leech on it now, because, of course, this has a 7% life leech roll on it, um, you can throw on other things, like you can potentially throw on a Fortitude. Uh, you could put on a Duress for the open wounds. Um, there's a lot of different options. Duress might be a good choice here, just simply because it does have open wounds, and it also has the um, additional crushing blow, which is going to set your mercenary at a 90% crushing blow, which is kind of insane. 15% deadly strike, not exactly the most amazing. Or you could go with Fortitude here to give him a huge increase in total damage, which brings him down to 75% crushing blow, which isn't too much worse. Um, and uh, I think Fortitude might be the better option here, because honestly 90% crushing blow is kind of overkill. But let's uh, take a look and see how he does, even in like Players A. Let's go play around with them. Let's bring him over to River of Flame. And let's let him just go to work. Absolutely destroyed that monster. Um, as you can see with this particular weapon, he is just like walking through monsters. Now one of the big difference thing differences with this guy versus some of the other minions though, or mercenaries, is that he's single target. So no matter how good he is going to be, he's still going to be a single target monster. Um, and also the damage output for this particular item is going to be restricted to the amplified damage that he has constantly running. So something like this is absolutely insane though. It's a build that can literally sh shred through even bosses. And it's essentially setting the mercenary up for himself, right? He's not really worried about you. He doesn't care about giving you auras that you need. He doesn't care about giving you 
you know, like uh, enchants or, or, or anything. He's just set up solely for himself. Um, now let's talk about some other particular options on potentially setting up your mercenary for, well, actual utility, right? So for utility, there's a lot of ways that you could potentially do this. And, and it's important to talk the, about also like boss killing utility. So how we set this guy up with the ability to kill bosses is actually pretty effective for caster types who are looking for a boss killer to go alongside their AOE damage. Um, casters tend to have trouble with bosses, and so setting up your mercenary as a really effective boss killer can be insane. Uh, I also potentially set up a very interesting build which was basically just on as much speed as you could possibly get, uh, which was rather interesting. I had uh, formulated this build a while back, and it basically just involves using a Hustle Man Catcher, a Treachery, um, and then uh, using the G-Face for the helmet. And the reason why you do this is because you get insane speed levels. 45% uh, here, you get 15% here. You also get the 30% increased attack speed here, which stacks him up to the moon and back, basically, for damage output. And uh, let me see if I could find a monster real quick. It really just comes down to attack speed, not necessarily his damage output, but he can essentially just attack with almost machine gun-like efficiency. Um, and then you focus on adding things like open wounds, crushing blow, etc., to try and get this faster. The really cool thing is, is that jab attacks three times anyway, so the more attack speed you add, the crazier that this gets to the point where... It can attack ridiculously quickly. Um, this is P8, by the way, and he's still pretty much just chewing through the P8 Corpse Fitter, which has one of the highest HPs in the game. Now, if you had more Crushing Blow in this, you set it up just a little bit differently, get it set up kind of interesting. I think my Man Catcher's not even Ethereal, is it? It's not even Ethereal. Well, that would explain why his damage is a little bit low in this. Hmm. I seem to have made a boo-boo with the Man Catcher. Well, I don't really have another good option for the hustle, so I think we're SOL there. Um, I do have a couple other options, though, so we're going to be taking a look at some other things. Now, these are other ways that you could potentially set up your mercenary besides, obviously, Insight, which gives you your mana regeneration. Um, and speaking of Insight, I mean, let's do a quick, a quick thing on Insight here. So Insight doesn't have any life leech. Um, so if you're going to set up an Insight Mercenary, um, you need two things. First off, no, it doesn't have any Life Leech, and second off, it doesn't have any faster hit recovery. Faster recovery is very important, as we talked about earlier, so you're going to need to add in both of these. Now, one way that you can add in the Life Leech, or, uh, life leech and Faster Recovery is the Bulwark, and I highly recommend this helmet if you're running Insight, because you get 20% faster recovery, which is going to help out a ton, and you also get your Life Leech with this. Um, and it comes with the physical damage reduction as well, which is definitely very nice. Um, on top of this, um, we also have uh, other options, like for instance, you could go with a Life Leech armor, like for instance, Chains of Honor is a Life Leech armor, but it doesn't have any uh, fast rate recovery, which is unfortunate. Uh, Bone Flesh also doesn't have any fast rate recovery, which is unfortunate. You could, however, socket a Shale Rune into it, which would help out tremendously. Um, Duress, however, does have faster recovery. It's a 40% faster recovery armor, and it's actually a pretty decent uh, choice. So uh, I would highly recommend running uh, Insight, Bulwark, and Duress as a combination for this. Uh, Fortitude, on the other hand, it doesn't have any faster hit recovery, but it does offer something else that the other, ar other armors don't, which is a high defense level. Now, when you're talking about faster hit recovery, faster, recovery recover faster hit recovery frames only take place when you actually take a hit. So if you have relatively high defense, uh, like Fortitude can potentially give you, um, this can help prevent faster hit recovery events. But the problem with this is, is that by going with Fortitude, Bulwark, and Insight, you're only at a very measly 20% faster hit recovery, which if we look at the chart, 20% faster recovery only brings us to 11 frames. Uh, which isn't the most amazing. Uh, if you go with Duress instead, you end up with a pretty nice faster hit recovery of a 60%, which will get you again to that 8 frames, which is certainly not terrible. 
Um, 60 or 86 faster hit recovery is really ideal for the A2 mercenary because it puts him in a lot less danger. However, Fortitude's defense is extremely nice, and it can potentially cancel out a lot of the faster hit recovery attempts. Uh, which is interesting. Uh, I do recommend that whenever you make your insight, though, you make your insight in a faster base. Uh, generally, faster is better when it comes to insight because it's such a slow uh, base and it doesn't have any increased attack speed on it itself. So making it in a thresher uh, is probably your best bet. Uh, I, I don't generally recommend making insights in slower bases because it, it slows down the speed at which your mercenary can attack and recover his health, and it's just not as useful. Um, I think you'll find more often than not, if you make the insight in a slow base, like for instance the Cryptic Axe, and that's what I have right now, that it, it just doesn't really hit as quickly and as quick enough to uh, basically allow the mercenary to get enough life leech and deal enough damage. So he ends up in a situation where he's surrounded, basically locked down, and eventually he ends up getting killed. Um, so it, it faster is better when it comes to insight, definitely. Let's go ahead and grab him back real quick. Um, now let's take a look at some other options that you can potentially use as weapons for the Act Two Mercenary. Of course, there's there's tons of options that you can potentially use, and uh, and I do have a second set of options here for the Act Two Mercenary. Good day. Um, I have a whole lot of them, actually. So first off is the uh, Ethereal Hone Sudan Yari, which does have to be upgraded to get its optimal effectiveness. And uh, if you upgrade it with a uh, Pull Lum and a Perfect Emerald, you get a Hone Sudan Ghost Spear, which has an amazing 45% crushing blow and some pretty decent damage output. It's also surprisingly slow, though. Um, so usually what I recommend is for people to either put three Shale Runes in it, uh, which is going to give you... Uh, Obviously, 20, 40, 60 percent increased attack speed, or uh, two shale runes and, and a am rune for the life leech, depending on how you need to go. So, if you're using a life leech helmet, you can go three shales. If you're not using a life leech helmet or life leech armor, then you're going to have to throw the am in there. It really depends on what your current setup is and how you want to get things done. But three shales is generally what you want to do uh, with this particular one, which is going to give you a pretty massive bump in your output. Uh, it's honestly the crushing blow combined with the ethereal status and the pretty nice damage output on the, uh, the ghost spear. It's just a, it's a really nice setup. Um, on top of this, uh, we also have the Tomb Reaver Cryptic Axe, which has gone down in popularity tremendously um, in the past uh, a couple patches because, of course, um, the changes to the Druid have made it so that ethereal... Reaper's Tolls with, like, Zodrins in them are better than the others. So it just happens to be one of those things. I think that was something playing in the background from the ads on that website. Um, so basically, with the Tomb Reaver Cryptic Axe, um, you could potentially find an Ethereal Cryptic... Two, three Socket Cryptic Axe here. And um, the, the benefits of using this are a couple. First off, it does have a really decent amount of resistances, which is going to immediately cap out all the resistances on your mercenary um, immediately, so you don't have to worry about resistances anywhere else. Uh, number two, it has 80% magic find on it, and you can, of course, also add even more magic find in there if you want to um, by adding in Ist runes, for instance. So if you want to just, like, turn your mercenary into a magic find mercenary, you could, of course, add Ist runes into your Tomb Reaver to bring it up to a 170% magic find piece of equipment which is pretty crazy. Um, and then on top of this, you also get... You're always trying to talk to me. On top of this, you also get the 10% uh, chance to animate, reanimate as skeletons, which is kind of useful to have like little minions that are constantly running around and doing things, kind of making it easier for you. 60% increased attack speed means it's going to attack really fast. It also has a really nice damage output, and uh, it's just nice. You can also, instead of putting three ists or three whatever, or like for instance, you could even freaking triple burr it if you wanted to. Like you could do something crazy like that and just put like three freaking burr runes in it. I don't know. There's like a hundred different things you could do with this weapon and it would be pretty freaking amazing. But 60% crushing blow with burr, burr, burr in there certainly isn't terrible either. There's the Ethereal Tomb Reaver Cryptic Axe is a pretty amazing piece of equipment. 
And even if you find one with only two sockets or one socket, if it's ethereal, it's still going to be pretty nice. And you can very easily turn it into a magic find kit equipment. Tag it up with a couple other really nice magic find pieces of equipment. And before you know it, like, I believe Steel Skull Cask. And uh, you could go with... Um, I believe uh, Chains of Honor has Magic Find on it, too. And so before you know it, you're sitting on some pretty serious Magic Find coming out of your Mercenary. Um, and then we also have Reaper Soul. Reaper Soul is absolutely amazing for the Mercenaries as well. If you have a nice Ethereal one, um, you can throw that on there. They get the Decrepify on Striking. It's not quite as good as that ridiculous Fool's Cruels of the Quickness uh, with two sockets and burr runes in it that I showed off earlier, it would definitely be inferior to this. But this does have 15% life leech, deadly strike, and decrepify, which makes it very effective from a couple of perspectives. First off, it's very effective damage-wise. Second, it's very effective uh, as a support item because it has decrepify, so it's going to help break resistances for immunities on physical damage. And it's going to also slow monsters down uh, because he'll be constantly using it and it'll be cursing them and slowing them down. Now, it's also a negative, though, because if you're trying to keep that, uh, say, life tap up on the target or maybe you're trying to keep your lower res, it's going to overwrite those. So it could potentially be a negative in some ways be just simply because you might not want the Decrepify curse to be active. Um... I'm trying to think if there's anything else here. Uh, when it comes to Reaper's Toll, I mean, you can do a lot of things with it. You could add, like, a 1540 jewel to it. So you could add a Burr Rune to it for some Crushing Blow. Um, you could uh, add an Ohm Rune to it for some more damage output. So you get a nice an extra 50% damage output, uh, which would bring you up to a nice 822 from the 801. Um, and you could put a 1540 in it if you had one of those laying around, and that would be pretty nice, too, because it would increase the speed and also, of course make it so it's, you know, even stronger. Um, as you can see, there's only a 10% difference between these two. This is a 1540, and this is the Ohm Rune. And so we have 15% increased attack speed or an additional 10% damage output. I guess it really depends on what you're running in the alternate slots, whether you need more attack speed or not. Um, another really interesting option uh, for armor that I didn't really go over is the Shaft Stop Ethereal, which has the 30% damage reduction on it. Um, if you utilize this, um, and you could even put a Burr Rune in it to make it even more damage reduction, but if you utilize this, you can very easily hit that 50% damage reduction cap on your Mercenary. Um, and this is a pretty easy one, and I actually kind of want to show you this. So let's go hop over to the other character that has the Mercenary. Um, and specifically for cows, it's it's really a cow item, to be perfectly honest, um, because cows are majorly physical damage, and so you really want to set up your mercenary for as much physical damage reduction as possible. But basically what you do is you usually get a nice shaft stop and a bulwark, which is going to bring your physical damage reduction up to 44%. Uh, and this isn't even a perfect, um, this is a, could be 15, so 45% would be what we're sitting at with just the bulwark and the shaft stop. Um, and then, of course, you can throw in something like a Shale Rune is usually what I recommend uh, because Shale Rune is going to give you that extra faster hit recovery and make it even more likely that you're going to survive those rough encounters. Um, you could also potentially throw in a 15% IAS Jewel, which is would be nice. Um, and usually what you want to do with something like this is you want to bring him into a more of a physical damage output setup, so something like Obedience. Um, and basically what this does is it makes him extremely tanky for physical damage reduction, and it allows him to have a really high damage output. Um, the 40% faster hit recovery combined with the 20 here gives him a really nice 60%, which is not bad. And if you throw 20% in here, you go up to 80, which is pretty close, I think, to that breakpoint. I think it's not quite there. So you'd probably be better off with... Um, 15% IAS jewel here. But this is a cow killer setup. Um, if you set up your mercenary with this this setup, an ethereal shaft stop, a ethereal obedience man catcher, and an ethereal bulwark, um, you will literally watch him just roll in and annihilate the cows. Um, he's not really going to have much trouble at all when it comes to physical damage. Uh, in fact, let's go bring him to some physical fighters real quick. Um, so, for instance, in this particular case, we've got uh, Eldritch the Rectifier, and uh, Eldritch the Rectifier is mainly physical damage. 
Uh, we also have some physical damage slingers here. Uh, but as you can see, he's really not having much trouble HP-wise. And this is player's eight, so it's pretty much the hardest that he can get. And he can just sit there and he can just tank these guys. Um, he might not necessarily be killing everything like super duper quick, but he can kill any particular target that he's going to focus on. And on top of that, he can also take the physical damage and not die. So he's not really going to have much trouble when it comes to physical damage output. Um, and, of course, you'd be supporting him as well, dishing out your damage in the process. But as you can clearly see, in Player's 8, he can sit here and tank Eldritch Directive Fire with absolutely no problem. It's kind of like a god-tier physical damage reduction setup, but it doesn't really do much for elemental damage. Uh, speaking of elemental damage, um, one particular setup for elemental damage, which is really powerful if you're doing, like, Trav runs, is a Guardian Angel Templar Coat upgraded into a Hellforge, preferably ethereal, uh, also socketed, and uh, Akira's Guardian up here for the really high amounts of resistances. Uh, you'll get the really nice plus resistances from the Guardian Angel, and it'll bring up all of his capped resistances to a really high amount, making him take massive amounts of damage with relative ease. Uh, he won't be as offensive as he was with Akira's and a Guardian Angel Templar Code, but he definitely will be able to absorb massive amounts of elemental damage. This is the physical damage setup, and the Guardian Angel Templar Code and the Akira's Guardian is the elemental damage setup. Um, trying to think if there's anything else here. Um, another way that you could potentially set this guy up is with a Pride. Now, I didn't bring a Pride in here because I don't particularly like Prides. Uh, I think Pride is one of the not greatest items within the game. Um, and I'll, and I'll kind of talk about why I don't think Pride is a good option and also what it's potentially used for. So one of the ways that you can set up the Mercenary is just to have as much auras as possible for your minions. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get, like, for instance, the Might Aura, which is your physical damage increase, and then you put a Pride, which gives you your... Uh, concentration aura, and then you might also have a nice helmet. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly what you could use for auras there, but um, I mean, you could do flickering flame for fire resistance, or you could do um, cure helmet for the cleansing auras, uh, or you could just do a bulwark for the damage reduction and the life leech. But basically, what it comes down to is your mercenary would then have a might aura coming from himself. He would have the concentration aura coming from the weapon. Um, and then you could also potentially have bramble armor in his uh, main slot here. So you would have might, concentration, and bramble all on the same target. The problem with might is it just doesn't really have any damage output. It's a very low damage output item because it doesn't have any actual enhanced damage, which is the main issue. And so because it doesn't have any enhanced damage, it just tends not to be the greatest option for the the mercenary himself, but it's decent for you. Now, the reason why I don't really particularly like this is because, number one, it makes the mercenary into a rather pathetic mercenary that can't really defend himself. Um, and number two, the other problem with this is that it's expensive, very expensive, and infinity is better. Um, and you might be wondering how infinity can be better than additional damage from concentration. Well, the thing is, is that infinity is a better damage weapon for the mercenary, and it also reduces the defense of all the monsters within range, which means that, generally speaking, when you're talking about like a minion necromancer or something like that, um, Infinity is just a superior choice to Pride for its damage output. Um, it, it makes sure that your skeletons are actually hitting more often, and because they're hitting more often, they're dishing out more damage. And you'll notice that Pride is just stronger in that regard in general. On top of that, your Mercenary itself also is very powerful with an Infinity Ethereal item in it as well, which means that you end up with a double increase. So you have your extremely good damage output on your minion, and then you also have your extremely good damage output from your actual character as well, your, 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 your mercenary. Now, another really expensive option um, is Infinity, and, and I would talk, talk about Infinity for a second. So, Infinity um, is expensive, uh, but it's pretty much identical to an Obedience. Uh, for the most part, when you're thinking about Infinity, Infinity shares a lot of things with Obedience. Um, it has the same forty, it has the same uh, crushing blow on it. Basically, it also they also both have negative resistances on them. Uh, one of them is negative lightning. One of them is negative fire. The negative lightning and negative fire doesn't apply to you. It only applies to the mercenary, which is unfortunate. Um, but the real big thing here is that you get the negative defense 
coming from the inf the conviction aura, and you also get the negative resistance coming from the conviction aura. Now the enchant gives you a large amount of attack rating from obedience, and you lose that when you switch over to infinity. But the negative defense that's applied from conviction does basically the same thing. So think about obedience and infinity as essentially the same item. Uh, I, I kind of hate to say this. But it really, it's, it's really true. They're basically about the same exact piece of equipment. Obedience is like the budget infinity for your mercenary before your mercenary actually gets an infinity. And once your mercenary does actually get an infinity, then you now have the superior version of this. Um, and um, I'm pretty sure I've got an infinity laying around somewhere I can pull out and we can play around with. But um, the main problem, of course, with infinity is that it's super expensive. And uh, because it's so expensive, it does tend to be, well, not as useful for the most part. Um, da, da, da. Trying to think if I have one of these just laying. I, I know I've got at least a couple laying around on a couple different characters because I use them for testing purposes all the time. I've actually kind of fallen out of love with Infinity a little bit because I feel like Infinity is one of those items that's... Uh, how do I put it? It's it's less useful than it seems because the range of the Conviction Aura itself isn't really that amazing. Um, and it does take some time for the Conviction Aura to apply to the target. Um, and once the Conviction Aura applies to the target, then yes, it's very useful. But the tick rate on Conviction combined with the range of Conviction tends to make it a lot less useful than it seems, if if that makes sense. Um, now, it, don't get me wrong, though. It's still extremely powerful for the mercenary itself. And uh, I don't even really feel like I actually need to show it to you because, you know, it's infinity. It's super expensive. It works really well. I mean, it's a powerful item for mercenaries. I'm not going to, like, throw shade on it in uh, those terms. But uh, I do feel like when it comes to the mercenary, there definitely seem to be, I don't know, better options. I'll say, I'll say better options than Infinity a lot of the times. Um, eh, it doesn't really matter. I'm actually trying to think of some other things that we can talk about when it comes to the Desert Merc. I mean, there are a lot of pros to the Desert Merc, but there's a lot of cons also, in my opinion. Uh, first off is the Desert Merc is very much so a single target damage output character. In the same way that we talk about, like, player characters as being deficient because they're only single target, the Act 2 Mercenary really is the same. He's only a single target character. And it's a lot more difficult for him to do his damage output um, you know, because he has to sit there and kill every single monster one by one, essentially. And um, if what you need is AoE damage, I don't think this mercenary is the right mercenary. He's a very powerful mercenary. In a, in a lot of situations, you'll choose him over the others, uh, specifically because he has the auras. That's also uh, one of the reasons. But also he has access to some pretty sick equipment and easy pieces of equipment to make. Like obedience is very easy. Insight is very easy. A nice hustle man catcher like ethereal is pretty easy. Uh, there's really a lot of good choices. And if you do happen to find something like that, I mean, that's just like God tier. That's like that's that's literally like God tier pieces of equipment. I mean, that's going to like blow infinity and uh, Honestly, it'll blow Infinity and freaking uh, Obedience like straight out of the water. Honestly, I, I, I've been looking for one of these for, for years, though, so don't uh, don't expect to actually find one anytime soon. But uh, but just watch how he deals with the monsters like when he has this item up. And the amp the amp aura proccing is really the big thing here. He's, uh, he's currently using the shaft stop, but still... There you go. Proc that amp or a do -si do Come on down. Let's go. Unfortunately, with the amp proc being so low, it doesn't always go off. So if you're doing a build like this, you probably want to go with a speed build to get him attacking as fast as possible. That way he has more of a chance to proc his little, his little aura than not. Um, but yeah, 
honestly, he doesn't really have any issues. When he does, I pro spawn, proc the amp on there, though. The monsters die pretty much instantly. It's great. Uh, on top of that, of course, if you were a physical damage character, him proccing amp for you is certainly no slouch either. So if you're a physical damage character and you happen to come across something like this, it's just golden because then you have amp up pretty much nonstop and you can get your physical damage output too. Um, trying to think here. Um, we probably should talk about some of the things that do or don't work on the mercenary. I know I always forget to go over this. Uh, so prevent monster heal does not work on the mercenary. Uh, open wounds does. So you have to go with open wounds if you're trying to kill regeneration. Um, on top of this, uh, certain things like regeneration, we talked about that earlier with the prayer, don't work on the mercenary. But um, they do have their own regeneration system, which is a whole thing. Um... To, to, to slime monsters rest in peace it does work on the mercenary so this is a very interesting one and it is something that um i should probably talk about there's only really like two ways to get slain monsters rest in peace on a mercenary and only one for the act two mercenary and that is tyriel's might so if you ever come across the tyriel's might and you want to make sure that your mercenary is applying slain monsters rest in peace like for instance if you're farming neolithac and you would really appreciate it if your mercenary would stop killing things and getting you killed because when he kills things he doesn't have Slay Monsters Rest in Peace, well, Tyrael's Might is your way. You put Tyrael's Might on your mercenary, he gets his Slay Monsters Rest in Peace, and you can farm Neolithac with your mercenary without having to worry about him getting you killed. Um, for a Barbarian Mercenary, though, there is another option. It's a Lawbringer, which is a thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much just Tyrael's Might for most of the mercenaries, though. Um, I'm trying to think of just anything else that I forgot here because I don't want to miss anything. But, I mean, if you guys have any questions, you could always ask some questions down in the comments. Um, obviously, there's budget versions of all of these characters and all of this equipment. Like, most of the stuff that I'm going over is endgame. But you can make an obedience in a lower tier, like Nightmare Base. Um, it's also relatively easy to get your hands on. Uh, Insight and Hustle can both be made relatively cheaply early on in lower bases, which is perfectly fine. G-Face is really common and easy to come by. Uh, the jewel that's in there isn't. But, I mean, for the most part, you just have to, like, stick and move. Like, maybe you find an ethereal cryptic axe, and I talked about how it's too slow. Well, in that case, you might want to pair it up with a treachery so that you get some increased attack speed so that the you know your mercenary can actually hit fast enough to dish out damage and also, of course, stay alive. Um, whereas if you have something that's extremely fast, like the Obedience, you open up your options and you can go with some better pieces of equipment like, say, Fortitude or Duress or, you know, like... Uh, maybe even a bone flesh or something for some lifesteal and some open wounds. It really depends on how you want to set up your character. Open wounds is only important if you can't apply it yourself, which is important to remember. So if you're a ranged character or a melee character and you have open wounds on your character, then you don't need open wounds on your mercenary because, well, your mercenary doesn't need to apply it. You're applying it. However, if you're a caster type and you don't have open wounds, of any type, and you don't apply open wounds, then it might be important or imperative for you to get open wounds to be applied by your mercenary so that you can arrest regeneration. And it's extremely helpful to arrest regeneration. Trust me. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when we're just yakking for 47 minutes on the Act 2 mercenary. And uh, as always, keep watching.